All right, so we've successfully installed Anaconda, we've updated all of its libraries, and in this final lesson focused on the Windows setup process, I'll show you how you launch uh, the Jupyter Navigator, which is the environment for navigating and finding your Jupyter notebooks, and then take you through the process of both starting one of these notebooks and shutting them down kind of whenever you begin your work for the day and conclude. So before I get to that, though, I do want to emphasize that this course does come bundled with a bunch of CSV files, uh, as well as a couple Excel files that we'll, we'll be using as our data sources throughout the course. So I have uh, my zip file here, pandas.zip, and I'm just going to bring it to my desktop and unpack it. So I'm just going to go extract all. Let's extract it right here. And here it is, and you can see that we have all of these uh, CSV files as well as all of these Excel files packaged it to here. Now, it doesn't matter where on your computer you place all of these files, uh, but uh, I would recommend uh, just putting them all in one consistent folder. And also, the more important part is placing and creating all of your Jupyter notebooks in the exact same folder. So in this course, I'm basically going to keep everything on my desktop in a folder called Pandas right here. And this is where I'll have all of my CSVs and also where I'll be creating all of my Jupyter notebooks throughout the course. By creating your Jupyter Notebooks in the same folder as your data sets, you ensure that you're not going to run into any issues uh, on import. You're not going to have any issues where you have to navigate to a different folder or a different directory. Everything is packaged within one place, making it super easy to load all of these files as the data sets into our notebooks. So let's go through the process of actually launching Jupyter Notebook at the start of the day. So I'm going to close out of this. And the process is once again going to involve the command prompt. So on Windows 10, I'm going to go to my start menu and search for my command prompt. And this is what I want. And I first want to once again activate the root environment that Anaconda installs for us. That's where we have all of our updated libraries. So I'm going to write activate root. And once it appears in parentheses on the left, we want to type Jupyter Notebook. Now what this is going to do is basically create a local server, and the reason we need a local server is because we need something that's going to process the Python commands we give and basically spit back the output. We're going to provide the input, we're going to give it the code, we're going to need some kind of server to read and interpret the code and give us the result within the notebook. So when I uh, press enter to execute here, we're actually going to see a server start to run, and then we're going to have a tab open in our default browser of choice, which for me is Chrome. So you can see here we're open to this Jupyter view. Let me just blow it up here. There we go. So basically this is going to be just like a Windows Explorer um, app where you can see your computer's directories laid out. So what I want to do here is navigate to the folder where I have unzipped all of my Pandas working files for this course, which of course is on desktop for me. So desktop, there's my Pandas folder, and here we can see all of the CSV files uh, that are packaged within this course, as well as a couple of Excel files uh, right here. So this is the folder or directory where I want to create all of my Jupyter Notebooks as I run throughout the course. So your process, whether you're creating a new notebook uh, or uh, editing an old one, is basically to come to this folder and everything will be right here. In order to create a new notebook, you click this new button on the top right here, and you're going to want to select the conda root option under notebooks. This is selecting the environment that's going to load the version of Python. So our version of 3.5 is, is stored in conda root. So we want to select that and that's going to load a brand new notebook for us. So what I want to do here is just give this notebook a name. So immediately I can hover my mouse over this untitled at the top, click it to load this box. Let's call this notebook test and press OK. And these things right here are called cells. We're going to dive into these in much greater detail in the upcoming lessons. But just to show you that we are running a, a live notebook and everything is working, I'm just going to enter a very simple Python command. I'm just going to do 1 plus 1. And then in order to execute this cell, I'm going to hold the Shift key and press Enter. And right below the cell, we're going to get the answer or the output, which is 2. So basically, whenever I send this command, the server is what's actually reading it and returning it to us as 2. And that basically means that uh, the server is running and the commands are being returned and we're all set. In order to save this notebook, let's say you followed along with a couple lessons, you've done a couple of these examples, and you just want to preserve your work, you can either press Control S, that's the keyboard shortcut, or you can go to File and click Save and Checkpoint, and that's going to save the notebook. Now this is where there are a couple caveats that you have to memorize. Simply closing the tab, for example, we have test here for our test notebook. 
Simply closing the tab with the notebook does not actually stop it from running. Behind the scenes, the connection between the server and the notebook is still active. We can see that that test file, it's, it has an extension of .ipynb, which is IPython Notebook. Again, that's just the deprecated old name for Jupyter Notebook, but basically Jupyter Notebook and IPython Notebook are the exact same thing. Those two terms are interchangeable. But you can see the extension of this file is .pynb. Here it is, we just created it. And you can see this notebook symbol or logo to the left is glowing green. And on the right side of this bar, we also have the word running. So this notebook is still live, it's still active. We can always click into it and that's gonna launch it uh, back, to its, uh, back to the notebook view in a separate tab. I'm just gonna close it again. And of course, if you're coming back uh, you know, the next day and just picking up where you left off, it's not going to be running, but this notebook file is going to be here. So you just need to you know, click it and it's gonna launch right back into that file. Once you're done for the day and it's still running, what you need to do after you close the tab is to navigate to this running tab up here. And this running tab will show you all of the current Jupyter Notebooks that are live or active. You can see that it's going to show you the exact path to this file, which is desktop pandas, and here it is, test.ipynb. And on the right, we have this bright orange shutdown button. And when you click that, that's finally gonna shut the notebook down and remove it from memory. Now, that's only part one of part two of the shutdown process. In addition to shutting down all of the notebooks from this view, what you then want to do is not just close the browser, which I'm going to do right now, but also go back to your command prompt, and you can see here that this server is still running. And um, you can tell because basically the, 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 the command prompt is prohibiting, prohibiting us from entering any new prompts. We can also see here that it's telling us use control C to stop the server and shut down all kernels. So what you want to do here to shut it down is predictably press control C, and then it's going to give you a prompt, Y or N, yes or no, and it's gonna give you something like a three or five second timer, so you have to be pretty quick there. And once it gives you that prompt, you can just press Y and then enter to execute. So let me show you, I'm going to press control C here. Let's see if it works. There it is. You can see I shut it down. I press control C a couple times, so I guess it didn't prompt me with the with the prompt, but maybe sometimes you'll get it. But you can see I returned back to my command prompt right here in root, and that basically means I'm I'm done with the server. It's finished running. And at this point, when I close the command prompt, I'm all back to my regular where I started from. So just again to, to reiterate the process, you're gonna want to launch your command prompt. You want to write the command activate root. You then want to write Jupyter Notebook. That's going to launch you to the Jupyter Navigator. You're then going to want to uh, navigate to the directory on your computer where you have all of your pandas working files. For me, it's going to be on my desktop. And then you want to open the notebook that you want to work with or create the notebook you want to work with. Do whatever you want to do. Save it at the end of the day. Close the notebook by closing the tab. Then you also want to shut it down on that main Jupyter Navigator view. After that, you finally close the entire Chrome browser or the window, and then finally you go to that command prompt and use that control C command to basically stop the server that's responding to your inputs. And that's the entire startup and shutdown process. And at this point, we've basically caught up with the Mac tutorials. So the Mac and Windows tutorials align here. They're now, uh, everything moving forward from this point is going to be identical regardless of whether we're running it on a Mac machine or a Windows machine. So we are ready to get started with the actual Python focus and then eventually get to Pandas. So if you're all good and everything is working for you in Jupyter Notebook, uh, you are all set to get started with the actual real meat of the course. So I'll see you in the very next lesson where, where we'll start diving into the uh, features and functionalities that are available within the Jupyter Notebook.